this. One of the things to do if you get lost in the woods, especially if you're a kid, but really for anyone, we're joined by PJ Richards from Adventure Smart VC. The big story over the last week, two weeks, uh, was uh, that four-year-old boy in northern BC that was lost while his family was berry picking. He was, uh, you know, lost for over 30 hours, harrowing search for him in the woods, and uh, they fortunately found him. A great end to this story, but it really brings to light what we need to do to how to prepare our kids if they do get lost. This one was just four years old. Uh, PJ, what's the secret? Tell us about your Hug a Tree Foundation or Hug a Tree Adventure, rather, program. Yeah, so our Hug a Tree and Survive is a, is a program we offer for free uh, all across Canada, actually, and it, it actually goes throughout the states as well. Um, and really what it is is to teach kids, hopefully, how to never get lost out there, but also what to do if they did. Um, so, yeah, it's a, a really fun one to actually try and encourage kids to go and enjoy the outdoors, but how to do it safely. Okay, let's start off with how to prevent getting Getting lost. Yeah, so we always tell them to tell an adult where they're going. You know, I've been on here before. We talk about leaving a trip plan. That's what we tell the adults. Um, with the kids, that's their version. Always letting an adult know where they're going. Um, and then we also encourage them to always have a look around while they're strolling out there. You know, maybe take a look behind you every once in a while so you can kind of remember which way you were coming from. Give you an idea of the route that you've already traveled so if you do get lost, you can find your way out. And now in the unfortunate event that you do get lost, what's the best way to get found? Yeah, so that was our rule one, always tell an adult. Rule two is if we were to get lost or even if we were to get hurt or injured or something like that, uh, we always want to hug a tree. Uh, when we talk to adults, I even tell them that uh, because the reason we say it is trees don't move. It's going to keep us in one spot. Um, so we always tell the kids to go hug a tree, maybe not hug it, but sit by it, something like that. Get comfortable next to it uh, and, and sit there and wait for searching. So is this why people often are not found or not found as rapidly as they probably could because they're trying to continually find their way out? Absolutely, yeah. If we stay put, it's going to be a lot faster for search and rescue to find us. Um, an easy way to think of it is if we were in a grocery store and we were walking around aisles, we could be lost, you know, the two of us looking for each other for, you know, as long as we wanted. Yeah, but if sure. one of us just sat there, I like to say like the apples, like the apple tree, uh, you'd just go down the aisles, you'd find me sitting there by the apples a lot faster. Okay, now, uh, what's a good way to indicate where you're at? You yeah. know, if you're hugging that tree, you could be totally unseen from above, for example. Absolutely. So um, when we're hugging that tree, our next rule is actually to keep warm and dry. So using that tree as part of our protection, use one of those emergency blankets, which we've shown before. Uh, we can wrap it around. There's even one like of him wrapped up in it there on the tree. Uh, so we want to keep warm and dry. And then we always want to answer searchers or help searchers find us by answering their calls. Um, and what we mean by that is maybe using that whistle, blowing it three times, maybe making signals if we're close enough to like a field or a meadow, big X, SOS, something like that in the ground. An um, arrow. An arrow, anything. We just encourage everyone, kids and adults, to not go too far looking for somewhere that they can make that. Uh, it's better to stay put by that tree. You've brought a few items in here. What we, uh, what should we be packing if we're heading out in the backcountry just in case we have to spend, say, 24 hours on our own out Yeah, in the woods? so this is the same essentials we bring for everything, adults, kids, anyone. Um, and really the biggest one right here is to encourage kids to have their pack too. Have make, their own Make pack. it fun as part of them as being adventurers, you know? They want to look like mom and dad. Uh, so give them their pack. Make sure they're wearing hiking boots and stuff. Um, and just always making sure we have that stuff in case we ever did get separated. Um, so we always want to bring you extra food and water, something to keep warm, an extra layer of blanket. Okay, yeah, here we have an extra layer. You showed the uh, foil blanket. It's small, it packs up, it doesn't weigh much, but it can really keep you insulated. Absolutely. A toque, a headlamp. Yep. You showed here as well. Uh, this one really important. Extra water, even yeah. We want to bring water and food with us. Uh, you know, I like snacks when I'm out on the trail, so so do the kids. Yeah, for sure. Um, one that we do talk about to the kids, but we do it with hesitation, is fire starting kit. Um, mm -hmm. We always tell them that's maybe not something they're bringing with them yet, uh, but it's something they can learn about, so they know down the road that that's something they should add to their kit as they become a teen or a young adult. Mm -hmm. Excellent information. Thanks so much, PJ. Thanks again for having me. All right.